Oops. Every time. You know what? I definitely want another water, uh, another well. I've seen YouTubers tank their channels because they started playing an MMO in, the, in their spare time. Yeah, Lady Sheila, it happens. MMOs are... MMOs are... It's like the one ring in Gladriel. It's like, this is the footstep of doom for us. Hinata, I love Lady Shilab's playthrough of this. Oh, that's lovely to hear. Shilab worked very, very hard and was extremely excited to cover this game. can sleep before day's end. Let's try. Hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. I guess you could quickly spam through the days then and go and go like grab the flint, but honestly it's such a walk. Maybe though if we can ride an ostrich up there. You just started playing Final Fantasy XIV. Honestly, the, the, the build quality in Final Fantasy XIV is in a league of its own. Oh, my lord. It is just different, you know? It is such a comfortable game. But then Final Fantasy XI was exactly the same. When... Um, Square made their honestly just their lobby and, and this is going to sound so silly and I appreciate that it sounds silly okay it will sound dumb but way back when Final Fantasy 11 just their launcher and the lobby made me feel happy and I realise how stupid that sounds but I would sit in the in the launcher, even though it really wasn't meant as a like a, a like a messenger app. I preferred to be in there and just chill out with the the lovely little music and and just you know message my friends from there and play triple triad, which I played stupid much. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I <laughs> square has a different approach to building games and you can you can definitely tell it, it, it's just the quality is different it, it, it there's no point in, in saying it's better or worse it's like comparing a, an apple and the moon they're just different kind of in the same way the bioware used to not get any points for uh for having a good story and believable characters kind of doesn't have that anymore sadly um but used to be a time where it would be like, yeah, you just don't compare any other RPG and a Bioware RPG. There's no point. They're like different species. They may have the same genre, but there's no point in comparing them. And then, you know, Andromeda. And, well, it started long before Andromeda, really. It was once it got eaten up by EA and then the development company kind of got separated. I think there was a rare magic in specifically the Canadian developer. When it got bought up and then the, you know, the, there was like an, uh, a Bioware California and a Bioware here and a Bioware there and a Bioware there. And they had nothing to do with the original development team. It diluted the name because you, you'd get games coming out by Bioware and it was by Bioware, but only in name because EA had bought the right to the name along with the developers. 
And that's what a lot of people don't understand is, is that uh, a lot of the stuff that came out that what just wasn't any good or wasn't as good. I'm not going to say it wasn't any good because a lot of them were, were fun in their own right. They just weren't the level of polish that people were expecting from a Bioware game. And that's because, you know, it just wasn't made with the same people. But you wouldn't necessarily know that because it, it wouldn't say, yeah, this is this is Bioware California. It would just say, it's Bioware. And it's, uh, I wouldn't say it was an intentional attempt to mislead people, but, you know, it's effectively what happened. All right. Uh, I think we've got a couple more days, so we're going to have another snooze. Done the important bits. EA is where games companies go to become vanilla. Ah, it's not entirely true. EA does make good games, and quite a lot of the dev teams do make good games. I think EA... See, this is the thing. Is, is you know, People worked hard on all the games that came out. It's just I think sometimes EA worked them too hard, and that had an effect. I think that's probably more, more the reason why some games weren't as good than anything else. It is people were worked too hard and it became more about hitting targets and not getting fired than you know being super passionate about 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 the games or, or indeed the passion was there it's just it was also buried underneath like you know four months worth of crunch it's kind of hard to rem remain you know really driven and and, and uh excited about something when you can't remember the last time you slept. Thankfully, I, I I genuinely believe that a lot of games companies now have have started to understand something that companies I used to work for, like even in call centers and stuff, understood a long time ago in Britain. And that is, you can't work people you can't expect someone to be 100% working all the time. That That is how you get bad work. Uh, one example I often cite is by a company that's generally reviled in Britain, and that's BT, British Telecoms. But uh, I was working there at the IT support department at one point, and the manager was like, yeah, 70%. That's all we expect. If you are active and working and focused, 70% of the time that you're contracted to be here, no, BT, uh, bravo tango um if you're working 70 percent of the time that's all we ask anything more than that and work quality goes down anything less than that and you're kind of being lazy we're not paying you to be lazy we're paying you to do good work and you do the best work if you're about 70 percent active more than that and you might be burning out and yeah as games companies get more on board with that kind of thinking, games improve. Go figure. Will they all respond? I do like that little uh, little area around though. But I do believe that we can now go and see about this. The call center I worked for wanted 70%, but that was 70% on the phone. And any off-call work was to be done on top. Yeah, no, that that that's how you get people who are uh, stressed. And I worked in the same call center as she. In fact, that's how we met. Um, that was later. It was a different call center. Um, but yeah, that was not that was not great times. In fact, that's pretty much once my once my uh, kind of YouTubing and streaming was stable enough for me to cover the rent by myself that's why i basically encouraged she to leave it was like look you've tried to play by their rules and, and go management and they're just using that like a carrot on a stick to get more work out of you without having to really you know make things better like you are not going anywhere there they're just going to work you until you're like a bitter old person who's who's worked there for like 40 years and has watched their dreams just slowly evaporate. I was thinking that a mat on top of their backs would... Uh, um, well, 
would amortigate? Amortigate? Oh, wait. I'm not familiar with that word. I think that should be enough for the calmer animals. Make sure you get close to one specific animal first and give them gifts often. Otherwise, I don't think they'll let you ride them. Gifts. Huh. Okay. Can I now make? I cannot make. Very well. I must get gifts. Uh, gifts shall be food. I like that one. Come on from Australia. I hope you had a good week. I did trouble. Thank you very much for asking. I hope you did too. Amortize. It means to spread over an... I mean, I got from the context that that's what it was meaning. I've just never seen that word before. Let's go and see if I can interact with them. Hello? Oh! oh! Hooray! Oh, wow, you are fast. Woohoo! Success! Ultra fast! And now at this point, if we were playing multiplayer, then uh, assumedly we would be able to uh, have ostrich racing. Yeah, again, I I think in general, a lot of devs, a lot of, a lot of development companies, they really really want to make a nice product. It's just if the if the the actual workers are under pressure all the time, yeah, you gotta it, making games. I think is an inherently creative process. And while some artists work better when stressed, or indeed when when depressed, you know the whole starving artist kind of trope. I don't think they all do. Uh, do I? Can I get off? I can. Ha! Ah, will you stay there for me? Let's go and have a look. So I, I think ultimately that that's where things uh, things go awry. I imagine this may be there to prevent uh, me from bringing a mountain. That might make sense. I don't think we're going to be uh, grabbing the obsidian axe. Just putting this out there. I just wanted to see how quickly we could get up here and get back, basically. And also, if it is RNG, how, many, how much obsidian we get. So far, the RNG hates us. With a fiery passion. That bookish bish. Thank you very much for the two months. Second month, best month. Dioch of Orion. Belial, my lord. Sometimes that, that... It's going to be for some butthead levels now, Belial. It's like, <laughs> he said, get off. It's like, yes, I did. While I was riding an ostrich. Calm yourself. My goodness. You scallywag. <laughs> Honestly, though, I'm kind of impressed at this point. <laughs> the, the ways that Belial can try and find to take me out of context. It's actually endearing. All right, Bob. Yeah, I can, I can, I can uh, get on back. But yeah, as we saw there, complete RNG on the on the obsidian. You could just happily continue to build up, though. I mean, we haven't really seen much with the uh, fences. You know what? The last thing we'll do before before we wrap up. The, uh, the part of the stream where we're checking checking out Roots of Patcher. I'll go ahead and I'll build some fences, I think. Let's we'll see what how how much we can beautify. That's an important important bit. But I think without paths that allow me to prevent weeds and stones from growing, there's only so much that fences can do. Realistically. There's only so much. And after a while, it's not gonna be enough. Just putting it out there. I 
can I take you inside? I can! Marvelous! It's you too. Can I ride the Nibex as well? I imagine so. I want to have a nice fence at least around the uh, the animal hut. Now, how will the crafting go? Let's go ahead and get like 20 of these. Okay, I'm going to need it over here then. So, working in America sucks. That's what I'm getting for this chat. I uh, I think it's fair to say that America does not necessarily have the best uh, labor um, protections. Being an employer in America is probably amazing. Being a worker in America, less so. Okay, I'm loving the, the, um, I mean, it is uniform across the pattern, but I do like the, that it's not quite. Oh, okay, so slip through, very well. Uh, but I, I do like that it's not just un completely uniform, every pole is exactly the same height. In fact, I think, I think maybe this should be further back. quite see behind here, but it uh, looks like I can make this path work. Definitely going to need more of them, though. Can I craft them in fives? No. Can I craft them with controls? No. Can I craft them with alts? No. Okay. Well, that's fair enough, then. Now, how am I going to branch this out? Um, oh, hello, Tilly. Oh, you sh I, I wish I had a cat cat. I really do. Sometimes she asks so cutely to be let out. She, uh, the first thing I know is that she's on her hind legs and just like pouring at my, my leg on my seat and trying to turn me in, in my uh, gaming chair to face the door. I'll be right back. Come on, the caddy out. Now, if I was a clever sausage, I would have muted the mic for that. But alas, I did not. Because I am not schmurred. Uh Right, what else do we want to do before... Oh, no, I don't want to throw it away. Before Dreamland takes us. There we go. I think I would like to remove these. Can I have them down here, perhaps? Maybe I should make this little area a bit bigger. And you. Ideally, no, I cannot move that. We could have them either side, I think. That'll look nice. In before I fall asleep while carrying an oven around. Hmm. 
maybe less nice. That looks a bit better, I think. Also that. Uh, let's bring down... Oh, there, there we go. <laughs> Sleep time. I saw a cat door on my office. <laughs> that is not a bad idea. Problem is, rented property, so I can't, I'm not really allowed to mess with the uh, things. Oh, I, I could ask. <laughs> like, look, can I have a cat door on my office? Please. Of course, in some of the cup, I could just take the door off, replace it with another door, and then, if they don't like it, put the old door back. Tonk. All right, you are coming with me. I would like you to live here. You can be for... Watering the ostriches. Sadly, I'm not sure if I can just... Uh, maybe I can, actually. Hmm. I'm Oh, I can. Yeah, I can, I can just straight up wipe them out. Very well. Actually, you know what? Of that here. Oh, that, that's going to look nice. Let's go and grab ourselves a fence. A wooden gate. How does one place a wooden gate, though? Uh, if this will work as a single... Oh, it does work as a single. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, that's perfect for us. Oh, and it automatically opens. Ah... This game knows, knows what's up. And I'm completely okay with that grass growing there. That actually adds to it. Um, I'm going to buy one more and then start taking it down. And then I think we're more or less done. I know we don't need the water in here. I want it there anyway. It looks nice. It's good enough for me. Hey, Abba. I know it isn't a lot of meaning to others, but I wanted to share, since the last time I had subbed, I let you know I had a baby on the way. Well, she's here in her lovely glory, and she's adorable. Thank you, as always, for the entertainment and soothing voice. That is fantastic. Congratulations, Lazarus. I'm sure all of the dapplings will uh, will be joining me in that as well. Oh, that, that is absolutely wonderful. by all means. Feel free to flood chat. We're the most. Sweet orange bunny. Alec, if you were a clever sausage, I would be worried if the Draugr uh, you were made of had reanimated. That, that, is, that is fair. There we go. Say hello to our ostrich friends. And that's pretty much it. Didn't quite reach these soon. But I think that's more or less where we're going to be uh, wrapping up this stream. And uh, our extremely early access coverage of... It's a patcher. I'm actually really, really excited to see where this game goes. And reading some of the stretch goals, one of the ones that has really got my attention is actual irrigation. So, you know, you literally lay down the trough lines for it and everything. Oh, it's going to be grand. I'm super excited for that, actually. Like, more than I reasonably have any right to be. I don't know why the idea of actual irrigation matters to me, but it does. So, you know... There is that. Right, let's get these shifted across as well. One there. Let's grab another that one. One here. Ah, oh, beautiful. Ah, I am really, really happy with uh, with the way this this all looks. I totally agree with the irrigation. Yeah, I know, right? Ah. 
Uh, tea break? Yes, tea break is going to be happening. Um, before we uh, head off, uh, we will be uh, setting up a, a little poll to decide what we're going to be playing. Lady Shelab says, children growing up and becoming apprentices sounds good too. If they hit that goal. I think that's one of the last goals, isn't it? They've actually made a really, really good bit of progress through their stretch goals though. Like a lot of progress through their stretch goals. Hi, Avak, finally catching a stream. Any plans to play Valheim today? In fact, that may be what we play uh, after the tea break. We're about to uh, go on a quick... Uh, oh, <laughs> Univenon. It's not with a T, it's Pacha. Not Pat Cha. There you go. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're going to be switching games either to Stonehearth or Valheim, depending. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, this is, I mean, I believe you can wishlist it on Steam. I think you may even be able to, to pick it up on Steam. Uh, uh, like pre order. I'm not sure. But you can definitely um, support the Kickstarter using the uh, link. So very graciously provided for you in chat right now. Uh, they are a good way through their stretch goals, but there's still a few more that they can hit. They're nearly halfway to the children growing up stretch goal, and they still have 21 days left. Yes, they they got funded right away. Like this hit its funding goal more or less straight away once it once it um, once it, the Kickstarter started. Um, and I think that says a lot for, for you know, the people's taste in games right now. Um, but as I was, uh, as I've been mentioning um, right through the stream, you know, the, the stretch, go the, the, the funding is already complete. It's now down to, to what stretch goals they can hit. And they're already deep into their stretch goals. I'm going to drop off the last little bit. It's 3.40 p.m. I think we can do a little bit more for a few minutes. And we'll, then we'll wrap up the stream. So whilst we're waiting for night time, does anyone have any questions that they would like to ask? I mean, generally about the game, though I suppose any questions are okay, but <laughs> whether you get an answer to any question that isn't about the game, ah, that's, that's a completely different matter. Also, hello, I don't believe I've talked to you. Do you feel it? There's something that's pulling us downwards. I'm trying to jump as high as I can, but I always fall back to the ground. Hmm. Garrick, you might be onto something. <laughs> my wife's biggest fan. Redeemed backseat pass. Are we there yet? Oh my lord. What have I what have I done? What have I created? Question. Are we there yet? Demi of Dip asks. Are we there yet? Sweet orange bunny out. Oh my lord, what have I done? Why? Let's see what we got. Dunk. Wrap up. After less than 12 hours, are you okay, Amic? Ah, we're not wrapping up the stream. We're wrapping up this part of the stream. We're going to be going on a tea break. And then finding out what uh, what game we're going to be playing next. Right now, I'm feeling either Valheim or... No, no. Uh, or... Stonehearth. Well, a part of me is also wondering if I might not fancy playing a little bit of uh, Sea 2. I think it's mostly Valheim or Stonehearth, though. I want to build stuff. With Stonehearth, it would be a brand new game using the uh, latest version of the Ace mod. And if it's Valheim, we're almost certainly going to be... Uh, Doing a little bit more hunting for the third boss, but I'm feeling a fair bit of building work should be done as well. I've got a couple of buildings that I would like to make. Okay, we're going to have to wait. There we are. No! Oof, that ripple didn't quite reach. Good. I like the time passes whilst in the fishing minigame. That's actually quite nice. Any plans to beat a troll into submission with your bare hands in Valheim? It's oddly cathartic. I, 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 that sounds terrifying, but I suppose I could. It would be a very long, long battle drawn out for no particular reason. Ah! No! He's double scared! 
How scared can you be? Triple scared! Oh, triple scared leaves. I was wondering. Triple scared just nope.jpgs out of there. Have I ever played any of the Fire Emblem games? Yes, I have, I'm sure. I'll try it. Guess I'm not bringing that fish back. I wonder how much... Oh, I can't place it there. I can't sell wooden fences. Uh, that is a shame. Let's go back and grab that fish. Uh, yeah, you can summon multiples of a boss at a time. Yeah, I'd already heard about that. You just put down more more versions of the, the summoning than, than you need. Which can lead to shenanigans. In no short order. Tonk. All right, it is time. Time for us to leave. I think I think the best way to go, and similar to how we went in the survivalists, with a dance. <gasps> you didn't like my dance. I feel offended. I think I've already I've already danced for them, but that's gonna be it. One last dance to wrap up uh, our coverage of Roots of Pacha. Now I'm probably going to get a. Uh, a first taste written uh sorry recorded and popped up on my main youtube channel and uh it will point then if anyone's more in, uh, interested in seeing a little bit more to the vods of this on my second channel also ryan uh ryan hmm the the addition of the w confuses my brain but hello thank you very much for the raid there that was very very kind of you mate And thank you very much for the Prime sub as well. Super kind of you. How are you doing? But uh, we're just wrapping up our coverage of Patcher for this evening. Uh, I will be going ahead and getting a first taste up on the main channel. Uh, and again, if anyone is, is interested in seeing a little bit more, I will also point across to uh, these vods on the second channel just for a, a little bit more a little bit more time with the game but that is going to be it for Roots of Pacha for this evening and now we're going to have to find out what we're going to play next I think so uh, thank you very much for, for joining me for the Roots of Pacha if that's it for you then I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed and I hope this uh, this uh, shone a light on what you can expect from Wooter Patcher, or as I said in the beginning, what the game is going to feel like. Now, there's there's a lot more planned for this. Do check out the Kickstarter link where I uh, typing exclamation mark Patcher in chat, uh, or if you are watching this over in Vodland, probably uh, down in the video description. And uh, hopefully, if uh, there's anything I haven't answered in this stream, uh, then the answer can be found there. But that is going to be it for Patcher for now.